Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome back to Tokimotive. Alright, so on this one, uh, we're continuing the L67 rebuild, which we're putting the cam in, the timing, and chucking the lifters in. Just get it all sorted so I can start putting heads on and stuff. But yeah, anyways, I'm not going to keep you too long at the start here. I'm going to let you just get into the video, and I'll see you at the end. Yes, I've just got some motor oil. And what we've got here, we've got our brand new lifters, which for these we went Nason or something. Where are we? There. It's our little hole on the side. That's where the oil actually feeds into when it's in the car. Rather than trying to find something that I can sit them up like that, I'm just gonna face that upwards. Make sure all of these are facing, have that facing upwards, and I'm just gonna fill this clean container with oil. There are hydraulic lifts there. If you don't prime them properly, they'll chatter and make all sorts of noise and they'll sound like you've got an RB30. <laughs> Alright, and I'll probably leave these sit in there overnight or something like that, just until they stop bubbling. I'll come around and I'll give them a little shake every now and then. Knock some of the air bubbles up, but I think that should do just fine for pleating them. Alright, now comes time for the cam. So, it's gone through, I've given it a good spray down with some brake cleaner. Make sure it's all cleaned up nicely. Now what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to get my hand, a bunch of assembly lube in it. And I'm just gonna rub the thing all over, just smother it. All the lobes, just give it a good, good little luby rub and tug. And you're just gonna carefully feed it in through the front of the motor. Piece. Now, for now with your cam, once you got them all slotted into place, you got your little retaining plate. You'll be able to tell which way it goes on because it's got little. There's a chamfered edge on the outside of the bolt holes. The other side is flat. And you got little notch outs there, which you'll see the heat marks on your block. But I'm just going to put a little bit of assembly lube on it just in case it does matter because this, this, the cam butts up against it, this holds it in. So I'll put a bit of assembly lube on the inner face of it or on the inner face of the cam, whichever strikes your fancy. Now these are just a T27 fork bit. I to just get a long ratchet for stuff like this. Now this will center itself because these bolts have that chamfered edge on them, the, um, the plate for where it bolts through. So you don't have to stress about that. Now there is probably torque specs for this, but your hand, your hand's as good of a torque reading as anything for this. Just go firm, don't go stupid. There's no need to go stupid on it. They're just torque bits, they're not made to hold a lot of torque. So, nice and firm. That'll do it. Just use a small ratchet so you can't overdo it. If like me, you had to replace your cam because 
The other one was fucked. You may have to grab your little keyway out of your old camp. These you can buy new, for most part stores anyway. Your little, it isn't a little half moon, but. All right. And you got a little notch on your camshaft itself. Which in this case, it's on the side. Now you got another running surface on the back. <laughs> I might be a bit overexposed because of the brightness, but as you can see here, we've got, um, I've slotted this gear on. Simple little, I'll show you this. That just sits on. You can feel your cam at the back of the motor. So put your fingers against the back of it, and then you push this gear on making sure to align it, align both dots, on the one on the balancer shaft and there's one on this little backing gear. Slot that on and align them. And the cam will sit proud of this gear and that's where your timing gear is gonna go on. So from what I've noticed for this, for the L67, it's probably gonna be different on the Ecotech just slightly off center is where it sits right for the timing and your new gear your new gear for the bottom literally just slots straight over this keyway there and there's a keyway on the inside of it generous amount of assembly lube and slot him off Ow. don't do that Make sure that cylinder one, which is on the, if you're looking at the front of the motor, it's the right hand side. At the front, cylinder one is at top dead center. That'll position this little dimple, which is your timing mark, towards the top. And I'll go ahead, I'll tighten this tensioner down, because I made the mistake, mistake just a moment ago of, um, putting the chain on and then trying to do the tensioner and it just does not work. There's just too much tension on it and you can't actually tighten it up without cross threading the thing. Right. There's a little hole underneath that you're gonna stick this wire into, which is actually the spring. But if you pull the timing off, I'm assuming you'll be able to put it back on like that. Now, with this as well, I'm going to worry about torque specs. It's going to go firm and a little extra twitch. Time and gear. Try and just hang it in your hands. Get your little your dimple at the bottom. Line it up over the top. Eyeball it. Make sure that that dot's in line with that dot, which it is here. Okay. Just wiggle that back as you go along. Make sure you put assembly lube on the face of your timing tensioner because all this has oil running through it normally and at the moment it does not. So, assembly lube. Lots and lots of assembly lube. Clean off those marks so you can see. They're directly lined up now. When you're doing this, make sure you get the right timing kit for your motor because the cams are exactly the same between Ecotech and the L67, but the cam gears are different because your timing gears, because this one, your um, L67 and Ecotech are degreed differently, so they're offset, so the gears do not match. The gears are different. So make sure you get the right timing kit for your motor. Okay. I'll get that home. Oh, it's low setting, just like when you put the um, bottom end together. Put the bolt back in your crank. Yeah. 
give it all a rotate over, make sure nothing in the cam or the timing's actually binding. And plenty of tension on that chain, it's not going anywhere. Happy days, everything looks good, everything's lubricated enough for that first start. And that's, that's your timing, pretty well sorted and back in. Woo. Now we're going to install the lifters now that the cam's in. You would have seen before, I put these in to soak. Just submerged fully in oil, having those little holes poking upwards to let the air out. Every now and then coming along just tipping it different little ways and disturbing them just to help let any air bubbles up. But they've been in there for probably about 12 hours. They probably don't need to be in there that long, but I just put them in at the start of the day and started putting it together. So for the sake of just making sure that first startup is nice and healthy, I'm gonna get assembly lube on my finger. And I'm just gonna give the valve guides a little bit of a lube up. Just to make sure that first startup is nice and smooth. So now I've got all those guides, the valve guides actually, you know, tunnels or whatever you want to call them. Valve. Okay. Lifter guides, lifter channels, whatever you want to call them. They're all lubed up now. And I'm going to go ahead and start dropping in some of my lifters. Which you want that roller facing down. And try to get that, um, you see that little flat piece there, try to have that facing up and down, that'll suit your retainer bucket. All right, with your lifter buckets, they'll only, they'll only, um, Really should only go on one way, but just give them a good thorough cleaning. Make sure that there's no cracks or major scratching on them because they are a like a forged plastic sort of part. If they are damaged in any sort of way where the actual buckets are cracked or something like that, source of replacement, otherwise you're going to spin another lifter and that's going to be the end of that and you'll be rebuilding a motor for nothing. So, clean up the brake cleaner off of them because I went a bit ham on it just to make sure it's all good. Get your assembly lube again. A nice generous little bit in each bucket. Give it a swish around in there. Make sure it gets on all the surfaces. Get your keyways so they match as close as you can, right from the get-go. Should just sit directly over the top of your lifters, like so. Without any any real resistance. See so there's quite a bit of play in them, which I don't like. I don't like this whole design in general, to be entirely honest with you. I think it's a terrible idea. I think it's probably one of the worst ideas they've had. There we go, I just had it on wrong. You'll feel it quite firmly slide over all your lifters once it's right. Please, that wasn't on right, because that didn't feel very nice at all. This is like that forged plastic part. It's pretty fragile, so I'm not going to go too crazy on it. Now, for your lifter guide plates, 
Hawk Specs Forum are saying between 20, what was it? I lost it already. The torque specs for that are saying between 26 and 34 newton meters, which this is currently set to 30 anyway, from what we were doing just before. So I'll just run with that, because I really don't want to mess these up. I don't want these breaking on me, because they're quite fragile. So, go to the click. And then a little bit more, and that should have us close to the top end of the 30. Alright. Put our big socket on the crank. Make sure everything turns over without any real resistance. You won't see them moving because they'll just move themselves to the top of the cam range. And they'll just stay there because there's nothing actually pushing them back down. But if something was wrong, you would have felt it bind up and it would have not wanted to push one up. And that would mean it's somehow misaligned with this. You would have felt the resistance, but if you felt no extra resistance anyway, it's fine. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you've made it through at the end, thank you very much, thanks for coming. I really hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff goes a long way towards helping the channel and I really appreciate it and anything I can do to help build this channel and make it grow better but anyway as always thank you and I'll see you on the next one